Hi, my name is Alex from Coastal Wall Ties Limited, based in West Sussex. Wanted to do a quick video but, uh, on cavity wall insulation and its problems. We get a lot of calls from customers uh, asking uh, to have repointing done um, because they've got damp. We go to the job, look at the pointing, nothing's wrong with the pointing, have a look at the damp. It coincides with injection holes with where the cavity wall insulation is. Um, and then, yeah, that, there's the answer. Uh, so we've done this for quite a while. We've had, uh, we were one of a few insulation extraction companies um, and up to about five years ago, there was um, quite an influx after the storms. The insulation companies were shutting down and setting up as instruction companies. Um, which makes you laugh really uh, and now there's lots of extraction companies and um, plus some insulation companies that also extract. Um, what the problem is with cavity wall insulation um, is the installers generally um, would fire it in too quickly. This would create dense areas of insulation in the wall. So on a south and a west facing elevation uh, where it's subjected to wind driven rain for long periods, mainly in the winter, because uh, the bricks will never dry out, uh, you get damp patches appear. Now these people that don't realise it's the insulation have um, a, a missold uh, work basically to, to rectify it. So I've had customers have their roofs uh, replaced um, all the guttering done, repointing done, uh, tanking done on the inside, sealants on the outside, rendering, um, you name it, they've, they've had it done. And I feel really sorry for these people that have spent out a lot of money um, due to poor workmanship and the fact that cavities shouldn't be filled with insulation. Not, not old cavities anyway. New builds are fine. Um, their methods are absolutely fine. You have solid bats of insulation that are full bat called Celotex that's fixed to inside the cavity but on the inside wall. There's still a gap um, between that insulation and the external wall. So any any moisture that's coming through on the external wall from the rain doesn't track across. So why they feel ca old cavity walls with insulation that's not waterproof, I haven't got the foggiest. It's a crazy idea and I can't believe that the government are still allowing this to happen. Because um, people people just don't know, they believe that it must be okay because the government are saying it's okay. And I just want people to realise that actually it causes a lot more problems than it's worth. Uh, if it's not penetrating damp when it rains, um, the properties are so well insulated in by the walls, the double glazing, the loft insulation, that there's nowhere for the moisture to escape. And they're not advising people who have cavity wall insulation how to ventilate, because you need to ventilate and have that air exchange, and you also need to heat your property. Otherwise, the people that in the winter, they turn their heating on and off. Uh, most people turn their heating off at night thinking that they're saving money, you know, they're asleep under a cover so they don't need it. But what happens is you have the heating on during the day. Uh, that means more moisture can be held in the air when it's a higher temperature. So you're doing your cooking, you're cleaning, you're showering, you're breathing, um, and it's absolutely fine. You've you haven't got a problem because the, the air can take that moisture vapour. Um, but then you turn it off at night and all of a sudden the air cools. So humidity level goes up uh, to saturation point and, the air, and it cools and finds cold surfaces uh, to condense on. And then you get the mould growth because you've got stagnant water um, sitting in these cold places uh, that's a breeding ground for mould. Um, so it's really important to know how to heat and ventilate your house. Um, 
So basically you've got to keep your heating on at one level or throughout the winter, um, 18 degrees say, um, your boiler is not gonna cost you the earth because the boiler will just kick in, kick out as opposed to sort of if you let it drop to nine by turning the heating off um, and then turning it on and wanting it to be 18, 20. It's gonna, if you do it that way, it's gonna stay on for that period of time until it reaches that desired temperature. Whereas if you set it at 18 uh, constantly, it's just gonna kick in, kick out, and it's gonna do very little work because all the surface temperatures and and the air is pretty much at that level anyway. Uh, so next comes the ventilation. Obviously you don't want to open your windows in the winter because it gets really cold and it kind of defeats the object of heating your house, but you do need to have that air exchange, um, especially in bedrooms because we let out a lot of moisture when we breathe. Um, and we're in the bedroom for a good nine hours. Um, so you need to have the windows slightly open. Um, trickle vents don't seem to be enough. These are these are small vents above the, the glass on the window. Um, normally you've got a grill or something there. And you can open, open and shut them. Um, they're not quite enough, really. Um, a lot of the other double glazing, like newer double glazing, has what's called a night lock. So you open it out, the window opens by an inch, and then you lock the handle down, and it will create a, a nice gap there for airflow. That's sufficient, that is sufficient, and it's also secure. So um, we recommend doing that, as well as keeping the heating on. So that's that will control humidity levels and give you that air exchange. But if you turn your heating off at night, you're just creating your own sort of weather system inside your house. Um, and it's a shame they don't advise this um, when, they, when they get give you the option to have cavity wall insulation. They just sell the cavity wall insulation and that's it. Um, cavity wall insulation is not ideal. Um, there's, there's several types there. They're pushing them for polystyrene beads at the moment because they are actually waterproof. But what we found is ants and insects love polystyrene beads. They make nests in there. It's like a modernized nest for them. It's perfect, perfect environment. Um, they bring up soil and bring it between the beads. And obviously soil absorbs moisture. Um, so you'll have a damp problem and it will end up, um, I mean, we've seen ants nests on the top of gable walls. So the apex on a wall um, in the loft space. <laughs> We've seen ants nest up there, so they really travel in the cavity. Um, but a lot of the time it's just at the base and you could mistake it if you think that rising damp exists, you can mis mistake it for rising damp. Um, so it's always worth checking if you do have damp problems along the base and it looks like tide lines or typical rising damp, so-called um, evidence, um, it's worth checking inside the cavity to make sure that that's you know, ruled that out. Um, also with the beads, although they're bonded with a, a, a glue, if you had, say wanted a bifold door and you've only got a patio door there, um, you would have to take some bricks out, the brickwork down. Breaking that, that bond of the beads, it would just make a huge mess. Um, go everywhere and then you'll have areas of uninsulated cavity creating cold spots etc etc so they're not ideal they're really not ideal they're very messy they'll go everywhere um, you can get under bonded beads so the glue hasn't set in the cavity so they're just the beads are just free flowing in there um, again if you have alterations that could be a problem um, and you'll just, you'll just be covered in beads all over all over the show. Um, but you can also get over bonded beads. So the, there's too much glue gone in there um, and it's set rock hard. Uh, this can have an effect on your external walls um, and actually sort of cause cracking um, as it's putting pressure um, on the wall. 
forms. Um, currently there's no way of extracting that without taking the, the wall down and rebuilding it. Um, so it's quite costly uh, and quite a risk in my eyes. Uh, the other insulation is white wall insulation. They claim uh, that that is water resistant, not waterproof. Um, and it's water resistant for, for well, it seems like about 10 years. Um, but again, it depends on how it was installed as to how long it lasts. Uh, it was sold as waterproof by many surveyors for the insulation industry, but it's certainly not, it's like a sponge. Um, that material, the white ball, was, or it does seem to be the one that was installed with the worst, because beads you can't really fire under pressure. Um, but white wall is certainly the worst one. Uh, you've got rock wall that's similar to white wall. Um, again, it's it does hold moisture like a sponge. Um, and that's pretty much it. You've got foam that they don't use anymore, urea formaldehyde. Uh, that disintegrates when you come in contact with water. So it'll create cold spots. Uh, if it's affected, if it's touched by the water, and uh, it would, yeah, it would shrink basically. So not a good one there either. The best, the best thing really is to leave your cavity clear if you've got an older property. Um, if you're renovating inside, you can buy an insulation-backed plasterboard, uh, which I would recommend. That way, you can get areas like the bub lintels and and things like that on the inside. Um, so you're not, you haven't got a cold spot. Whereas if you have the cavities filled, they can't feel in, uh, where the lintels are because they're solid lintels. So that's automatically a cold spot. So internal plasterboard, insulation, insulation black plasterboard, sorry, um, is a good is a good thing. But you still have to heat and ventilate your house. Um, they do external rendering. Uh, insulation render um, again that's okay you can they're, they're solid blocks of insulation and then render over the top <laughs> it's going to make your property bigger in a sense that you've got insulation and then render on top of that so it's going to be wider your window reveals are going to be deeper um, and then there's all the services and things that need to be taken off to to put that insulation on and, and render over so everything has to come off and get put back on which is a bit of a pain um and then not all properties would be suited to insulation render because it might be a listed property it might be a, a lovely brick built house that look so out of place being rendered um, and things like that so it's, it's quite limiting with that you've also got the option of if you've got a brick built house um, to apply a masonry cream now the leader for the masonry cream is storm dry um, based in Horsham near us um, that's guaranteed for 25 years I think and basically that cream soaks into the brickwork by about 18 millimetres, depending on the density of the brick. So if it's an engineering brick, it's not going to work too well, but it can still soak into the mortar. Um, and that will allow the bricks to repel water, stay dry, therefore saving you a bit of money um, on your heating, because you're not heating wet bricks and uh, that are colder. Um, so overall, I would advise against having cavity wall insulation as much as I want to reduce carbon emissions and stuff, you know, things like that. It's just not a good idea. We need to be a bit wiser on how we use our energy rather than <clears throat> trying to mess things up that have been put there for a reason. Cavities were there to stop moisture tracking through um, onto the internal walls. Uh, yeah, hopefully this helps people. Uh, sorry for the 
uh, you know, the first video that we've done is not the best, but uh, hopefully I've helped nonetheless. I'm going to do a, a video on condensation um, towards nearer October. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you want to subscribe, I'll try and do some more videos um, to help people out.